mic. I'll use it. Hello. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, I'm Jeff Chen, and I'm, today I'm going to be talking to you about the crossroads of martial arts and medicine. All right. If you remember the last time you saw your physician, he was probably holding something like this. This is a stethoscope, and it is the most widely used tool by physicians. With it, your doctor can diagnose and treat an infection, can detect a fatal heart arrhythmia, and can quite possibly save your life. Your doctors have one goal, and that is to keep you healthy. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to, to show you what you can do to do, that, to do your part in keeping yourself healthy. Everyone in this room has something in common. We share something. Everyone has it. We were born with it. We will die with it. Sometimes it's an advantage, at times a barrier, and you only get one, and that is your body. The body is amazing. It's an incredible entity. It has the ability to create energy out of thin air. It has the ability to send neural signals at over 200 miles an hour, and it has the incredible ability to heal itself. I want you all to do this with me. Put your thumb on your temples and rest your the rest of your hand over your forehead, kind of like you're looking out into the distance. Good. So in those three seconds, you guys can put your hands down. Something, two amazing things happen. First, your body just regenerated over nine million cells. That's incredible, isn't it? Second, you simultaneously identified one of the strongest, densest, hardest parts of your body, the frontal skull. And you've also identified the weakest, most vulnerable part of your body, the terion. The terion, as you can see here, is the intersection point of four of your different skull bones. Much like a jigsaw puzzle comes together, the weakest point of the puzzle is where the pieces intersect. A fracture of this bone can lead to death within minutes to hours as a result of what's called an epidural hematoma. So while the body is incredibly resilient, it is also dangerously fragile. How can we make our bodies more resilient? Well, one of the ways is by training in martial arts. Let me tell you about the story of, a, of the patient that never came into my clinic. Uh, you heard that right, he never came into my clinic. So he was a young man, an adventurer, going on an overlanding experience. While he was rock climbing, he lost his grip and he fell about 10 feet, 10 feet down into the concrete face first. Instinctively, he braced himself, he rolled, he broke fall, and without a scratch, he got up and walked away. That was the end of the story. He never came into my clinic because he didn't need to. Now let me tell you about the story of the, the boy who kept coming back to my clinic. He was a young boy who loved playing basketball. He played it every day. One day he came in with a fracture on his arm. We ended up taking him to the operating room. Put in, we put in uh, metal plates, pins, and screws. Sent him through months of intensive physical therapy. Eventually he made a full recovery and we took the plates out. Two weeks after taking out the plates, guess what happened? He came back with a fracture of his arm in the exact same spot. Now isn't that... That's, that's, that's mind-boggling how this could happen, right? We had literally just fixed his arm, and now he's back with the same injury. What was the difference between the patient who never came to my clinic and the boy who kept breaking his arm? Well, I'll tell you one thing that was different between them is that one practiced martial arts and one did not. All right, that, unfortunately, the, the boy ended up spending about $30,000 in medical bills just for those two fractures. $30,000. Let me put this into context for you. $30,000 can buy you a brand new Chevy Camaro. It can also buy you 30 iPhone 10s of the latest generation. It can also pay for six and a half years of martial arts tuition at almost any school in the country. And for you foodies out there, it can buy you 3,000 Panera bread steak arugula sandwiches. <laughs> so as we can see, the reflexes that are gained through training in martial arts can not only prevent injury, but it can also save you money. Uh, and in, in today's rising healthcare costs, saving money, that can make a big difference. All right, I'll break down uh, the human reflexes into two types. They're trained and untrained. Uh, so we'll talk about untrained. Untrained reflexes are the ones that you were born with. Mother Nature gave them to you at birth. For example, imagine a projectile flying towards your eye. Instinctively, your mind forces you to blink to protect your eye from damage. 
Uh, in the hospital, we actually use this reflex to test a comatose patient for uh, the integrity of their brain. What we do is we fake punches at them, and we see if they blink or move. And if they don't, they're still in a coma. <laughs> All right, in medicine, we call this the corneal reflex. But in martial arts, we call this the flinching. Uh, imagine if you could build additional reflexes that would protect your body unconsciously when you needed it. Uh, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? It would almost be like having a guardian angel watching over you at all times. Well, let me tell you, you can actually do this because this is where the trained reflex comes into play. A trained reflex is built from repetitive motions that are ingrained into, into your brain. Uh, the cerebellum is the lobe of your brain at the back of your skull that stores all of this information. Uh, martial arts will, in, will instill instinctive reflexes that can protect you when you least in, expect it. Uh, however, this is a double-edged sword. So if you train improperly, you will build the wrong and incorrect mechanics into your body. Still don't believe me? Take a look at these statistics from Johns Hopkins. All right, so if you can see, I'll explain this to you. This shows the yearly injuries uh, in youth. So most commonly, you see football, basketball, and baseball. If you look closely, or if I enlarge this for you, you'll notice that nowhere in this study do you see any mention of martial arts or combat injuries. Nobody has, uh, combat injuries don't appear in this study. And why? I always thought it was, it was odd. Uh, in my clinics, that I wouldn't see that many martial arts injuries. MMA fighters rarely came in. Mostly it was basketball, football, baseball, skiing, and snowboarding. Why is this so? I think this is because martial arts inherently builds a protect, it serves as a protective factor against injuries. Uh, the very nature of martial arts is to train your body in self-preservation. In the army, another term for martial arts is combatives. Uh, we use this to train our soldiers and help develop what's called the warrior spirit, where you are strong, tough, and unbreakable. And while most people at some point in their lives thought they were invincible, mostly in the early 20s, early to mid 20s, uh, the reality of the matter is that we are not invincible. The body is very breakable. According to the American, uh, American Association of Orthopedic Surgeons, the most common injuries associated with martial arts are cuts, sprains, and bruises. Now these may not sound like very serious injuries to you, and they're not because most of the time you can treat them with uh, rest, ice, and maybe, maybe a Band-Aid. As a general rule, if a part of your body has good blood supply, it will heal quickly and efficiently. Uh, the more serious injuries come into play with the parts of the body that are unlikely to heal by themselves, and as a result, will often require surgery. If you've ever torn your ACL, you'll know that the, once the ligament is torn, it will never be the same again. Professor Kang uh, mentioned that to us earlier. We'll show you a picture of the ACL here. The top bone is the femur bone, the bottom is the tibia, and then the middle of that tiny structure is the ACL. Very important for stability of the knee and one of the most commonly injured uh, ligaments in the human body. You can replace the ACL with your own transplant or with a cadaver, but it will never be the same as the one that you were originally born with. Uh, prosthetics, they're another great solution for those who have lost limbs and joints, uh, especially those in our military. But e doctors, f therapists, and even the companies that make these replacements will all agree that there is no man-made artificial limb or ligament that can properly serve you as well as the, the original one that you were born with. So the best body that you really have is the one that you were born with, the one that the creator gave to you. You have one set, so make sure that you take good care of it. The human body, as you can see, is very complicated, and there are many unanswered questions. So you may be asking, how can we fully understand how to preserve our bodies if we don't really fully understand our bodies? And that's a good question. My life as a physician is devoted towards helping you to heal and fix your body when it eventually breaks down. Your job is to prevent it from breaking down for as long as possible. Keep that in mind. And it should be clear now that uh, martial arts is worth your time and investment. The earlier you train, the more lifetime benefit you'll gain from it. Uh, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 50s, 70s, or beyond, there is no bad time to start training in martial arts. There's a good time, and there's a better time, and that better time is gonna be now. For those of you who are already training, keep training. 
I commend you, never give it up. Um, I'm going to show you a quote from one of my favorite speakers. Well, I'm going to tell you about it. <laughs> he says, his name is Jim Ron, and he says, uh, you, have, you have one body, take care of it, because it is the body that you're going to be living in for the rest of your life. All right, uh, so to end, I'm going to, sit, I'm going to tell you guys this. If, you've, if you guys have ever abused your body in any way, and many of us have in this room, myself included, it's time to reevaluate. We can keep on training and living the way that we have in the past, or we can leave here today and think about this. Just as you respect your martial arts instructors, just as you respect your parents at home, and just as you respect your bosses at work, respect your body because you only will ever get one. So train, train smart, and respect your body. And instead of seeing you in my clinic, I hope to see you guys all on the mats. You guys are amazing, thank you. Hope you have an incredible day. <laughs>